I think that uh, one of the most interesting questions in in the history of mankind nearly is uh, what is it that Jesus was? What is it exactly, in a way, that Jesus was? <clears throat> this is really, really, really an interesting question, uh, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and scientifically, in every possible way. What is it that Jesus was? Uh, I think that Jesus was the true self. And uh, we become the true self when we let go of our when we let go of our identification with the psychological self. I mean, you can see these two institutions, the polarity between these two institutions, the true self, which is the soul heart, the soul heart essence, and the psychological self, which is the self-created survival strategy apparatus that we have developed through life. Um, we need the psychological self and it, it will always be there. It is a result of being born in a way, you know. We, we need the psychological self in order to organize ourselves, uh, in order to, to be what we are and also perhaps even we need it in order to find the true self beneath it, behind it. So we can say that the self behind the self, you know, the I behind the I, the soul behind the soul, I mean, <laughs> the source, the ultimate. And um, to me, Jesus was the true self. And um, I think there's a very interesting and it's a wonderful contribution that the great uh, American Richard Rohr uh, did to the reflection on this, uh, especially through his uh, concept or idea or term, the, the universal Christ. Because the Christ is in a way the true self and we have all, everyone has access to the true self, so everyone has access to the universal Christ. The universal Christ is a part of us. It's a, it's a possibility that we all have or carry inside ourselves because <clears throat> the universal Christ is an essence that lives inside the human being. If you, <clears throat> if you remove the identification with the psychological self or if you remove the, if you remove the psychological self then uh, what's left is basically the true self. Uh, in a way, and um, the the story of Christ, as I see it, is also that you know he carried his cross, and he was crucified. But you can also say it in in another sense that he crucified, or I mean, it, it's it's an image of the human being crucifying himself as the psychological self, and after you die. After you die as the psychological self, then you get reborn as the true self. I mean, you come to life through the true self. And that's also why Jesus said that only children can enter the kingdom of God, because when we are the true self, then we are innocent, same as children. If we are attached to and identified with the psychological self, then our mind domain is too big and too complex and too stuck in attachment mm. for us to enter the, the true self state, the divine state, the heavenly state, the timeless state. So uh, I always see it in that way that Jesus went from the psychological self to the true self and when he was the true self he became the Christ. You know, the Christ is the true self. And I think that this is also what Richard Rohr means in a way when he speaks of the universal Christ, that we all have access to that. And there's a line between, let's say, Mary Baker Eddy and Richard Rohr and Bhagavan Maharshi in India. Bhagavan Maharshi was maybe the Jesus of our time or in the last century. I mean, he 
he really abided in the true self state and saw that this is the way to the kingdom, this is the way to God, this is the way to true self. And true self is the kingdom of God, in a way, because it is pure essence, it is pure source, it is what we are in our essence, when we are removed from the identification process with the psychological self. And there's so, so much psychological research and that there's so much evidence <laughs> pointing in this direction. We cannot call it evidence, I guess, but I mean, the, the thing that I really like is the science of Jesus, you know, brain science. I mean, what is it that Jesus was? He, he liberated himself from attachment to language, which means that he liberated himself from the attachment to thought. And because he did that, he also removed himself from the identification with the psychological self, because language and thought is a, is a, is a, are aspects of the domains of the psychological self. So when Jesus said that I am the Christ or I am the Father or, or I have the Father, I have the kingdom of God inside myself, then people just could not accept that because you cannot see that when you are identified with the psychological self. If you live as identified with the psychological self structure, then it becomes a revolutionary or inappropriate or blasphemic to say something like that. But if you understand, recognize and experience the essence of the true self, then of course it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. And so in a way you could also say that we are nothing, you know, we are the ultimate, we are para Brahman and para Brahman is the ultimate source of everything. And if we accept to be in the, if we accept that we are beings that come from the Parabrahman state, then it's also very easy to see ourselves as true selves, because then we are just heart, soul, essence. And that's when we can uh, throw away our crutches and begin to walk without them, because the crutches are the identification with the psychological self. When Jesus says that you are healed, then perhaps he said that in a way that people understood that, yes, my sickness is a story. I have created this story with my psychological self. If I, don't, if I no longer believe in that story, if I no longer believe in the identification process with the psychological self and the stories that we produce of sickness or of anything else uh, in this psychological self-state domain, so to speak, then we see that we are free from that. We are free from the stories that hold us down. And of course, this is also the, the fruits of meditation. It's the fruit of vipassana. It's the fruit of Buddhist uh, insight, you know, that uh, whatever you think is uh, just something that you think. And <laughs> we produce our own thoughts. And if we want freedom, then we have to liberate ourselves from our identification process with these thoughts. We, we should cease believing in the stories that the thoughts produce. So, this is just a little hello into this dialogue, because this dialogue should be kept open and alive forever, because it's such an interesting question. And, and uh, there have been many people who have seriously contemplated the essence of Christ. Many of them were crucified and burnt on the stake. <laughs> and as is normal in, within human civilization, we, we punish people who say something different, or at least we did it before, simply because we were attached to the stories that thoughts produce. I mean, we, we believe in the validity of thought, which is a complete, uh, it's a strong, uh, predominant feature of the psychological self to believe in the validity of thought. But if we can ex exist and live without that attachment, without that identification process, then we can 
feel, see, experience the state and the essence of the true self. And the true self is, is the source of freedom. Uh, it is the source of freedom in itself when you abide in that source, of course. And it's also the source of freedom in a way because you can see how all the stories of the psychological self um, crumbles and loses their validity. You know, it's a house of cards. The house of this, all the stories that we believe in are a house of cards. And when it collapses, when it falls down, when it disintegrates, we are left with a source and an essence that is really, really beneficial and helpful for us when we are not afraid of it. But usually people are afraid of that because they feel that, well, I have only, I am the psychological self, I am me, I am this person. So if I don't have that identification, then uh, I become afraid, you know. But that's to overcome fear, to let go of that fear, so that you can see that, oh, wow, actually, it is just a story. It's just an identity structure that I don't have to identify with. It's just something that pops up in my mind uh, as a result of the programs that we develop in childhood uh, when we grow up in society and in the environment in which we live. So, yeah, this is just a little hello into that reflection. What is it that Jesus was? I think it's it's a wonderful question, and I think that without accepting brain science, psychological science, true self, contemplation, deep inner abidance in, in states that are deeper and more prior to the psychological self-structure, I mean, that's when we can access these things and uh, it's easy to be it's easy to become uh, if we don't believe we don't have to believe in the big miracles about walking on wa walking on water and turning water into wine i think that just to understand the true self is enough in a way because para brahman true self is the source and the essence and then the psychological self is the periphery is the is the circle around the earth and the earth in this perspective is the human mind right so the human mind has a circle and that circle is the the periphery of that circle is the psychological self but within that circle there's an essence that that in which we can find source essence and deeper and more fulfilling states of being which uh, will free us from quite a lot of the self-produced problems that we have and of course of all the problems that modern world creates on a daily basis in the media in politics in business life in human life uh, at large so Thank you to Richard Rohr for the reflection on the Universal Christ, and thank and you cannot say thank you to be to Bhagavan Maharshi because that is not enough. I mean, he he did so much. I mean, it's it's just sacred. He he conveyed something so sacred and something so immensely important. I mean, he conveyed and released the true home of man in a way. The kingdom of God is within. And um, let us see the the way to internal true self essence. Anyway, yeah. Well, so this was just a little reflection about that. Thank you. <clears throat>